Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I'm frequently asked about shooting boards. I use them a lot. Um, I have several and I've desi I've changed some things about mine to make it a little more user friendly. I'll share them with you and then we'll go through the process of actually making one. Uh, first of all, the materials I use. I like MDF for the base. It has a nice hard wearing surface. Doesn't have much for strength on the edge, but on the top surface it wears well. It's stable and it's relatively inexpensive. This is actually made out of one inch, so that's even nicer, although it's kind of heavy to move around. The second piece I use, I like to use Baltic Birch. Um, nice stable product again. And the reason you have to have the second piece, when you use your shooting board, this piece has to elevate your wood or your work piece so that you get into the blade. <coughs> and you get by this area right here where there is no blade on a typical bench plane. Third material I use is something really hard. This is a piece of, uh, I think it's Jatoba, and it's a uh, very dense tropical wood, nice and hard. That gets a fair bit of abuse over the years, and if you want to prevent it from getting all marked up or full of dents, then you need something nice and hard. And I use the same thing, although it doesn't need to be, down here as a cleat to prevent the shooting board from moving forward when you're using it. Now, one of the uh, couple of couple of issues. I'll start with the minor and end with the major. Um, I've always seen shooting boards with the fence back here, and the problem is when you're teaching new people to do this, they would always be moving their plane around like that as a result. So what I did is I brought my sh my fence up here three or four inches, so that when you bypass your workpiece, you still have some registration area to keep the plane going nice and straight. Just overall made for a more accurate experience. Now the other problem took a while to figure out and when I did I had to cure it because it was uh, extremely problematic. Anytime you glue two pieces of wood together you risk creating a stress line which is going to cause a, a cup or a bow. In this case what typically happens is your shooting board ends up being cupped like this. If you're using a standard bench plane where the middle of the plane is wider than it is at either end what happens when you put that into an area that is slightly dished and I'll show you with a square we put a square on here right now that shows being nice and square which means when I put my workpiece in there as long as my blade is parallel to the sole I should get a nice square end and I never have to worry about checking it but the minute that you, that you introduce a cup or your shooting board it has a tendency to cup like this because it's wider the plane is wider here than it is on the end when when it's cupped it's going to tip out like that and now when you put your square on there now that's extremely exaggerated but that's the situation you end up dealing with and then you have a bevel on the end of your board instead of it nice and square. You can take a little bit of it out with the plane by adjusting it with your lateral adjustment lever, but you don't want to do that. You want to have it nice and flat to begin with. So what I do is I purposely create my shooting board over a slight mold so that there's always a bit of a crown. A crown, it'll always lay flat right here and just the weight of using the, the uh, shooting board will actually push that crown out so it'll be flat, but it will definitely avoid the cup. Um, the rest of the stuff we'll show you as we go through this. So we're going to move over to the table saw. I'll see you over okay, there. So here's my two pieces that I need. My MDF. I'm actually making this one out of three quarter. I don't have any more one inch. And there's my piece of Baltic birch. Now it's sold as three eighths, but it's Baltic birch, so it's metric. Actually, that's coming in right at a quarter. So maybe it is sold as a quarter. I don't know. All right. Uh, first thing I want to do is check this. And this stuff's always. It's never going to be perfectly flat. So I, what that tells me is that the board is shaped like that on the bottom. If I had to flip that over, and you see how it doesn't move like that. So what I'll make sure is that this ends up being my top. I had a pen or pencil around here. I'll mark that. And if you want some dimensions, I'm going to use this on my bench. So it's 24 inches by 12. Rarely do I ever need it any wider. In fact, I made a wider one. I end up cutting it down just to reduce the weight because I didn't need that extra width. Okay, so this is if this is 24 by 12, then this piece is going to be 24, same length, but I've got that cut down to 9 and 7 eighths. That'll give me plenty of area to rest my plane on. However, what I like to do is cut a little rabbit right along this edge. So I'm going to cut this section out over the full length and I will leave that part down there intact. What that does is prevent the blade of the plane from cutting into the shooting board all the time and that area right here will actually rest below the blade. So to do that, 
I'll set my blade so that it's it doesn't need to it doesn't need to protrude this in this direction very much at all. In fact, that's more than I need. And then we'll set this. I'm going to set it so that uh, be, uh, about half. Okay. Make sure there aren't any burrs so that that'll lay flat. Just a little bit more. Okay. So there's what we're looking at. Now, I want this, I want to strengthen this so it'll wear better. So what I'm going to do is soak this edge with cyanacrylate, which is a super glue for wood, if I could find some. Give me a second to find it, please. I need to saturate is right here. This is the part that's actually going to wear. So we'll go in here and just run right along there. That'll soak wick in there. I got this idea from uh, watching Dale Nish turn wood. And if you got into an area where the wood was punky or starting to rot, you could use this stuff and it would go in and make that otherwise soft area really hard and workable. All right, we'll give that a minute to dry, and then we'll go back over to the table okay, saw. Okay, this is ready to glue on, so I'm just going to wipe this MDF. So because there's a natural curve already in there, I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, build a somewhat of a form. I'll show you how I do it. 12, 8, and 4. 16 and 20. One, two, three, that'll work. Now it's just for reference. Now, using masking tape, I'm going to put eight pieces to Eight there, and then six here. Actually, I'm going to do five here. And three here. And that'll create a little bit of a uh, curve when we glue this piece of uh, plywood on and we'll do it on something solid of melamine and I'm going to set that right on there and I'll show you how to work with do this if you don't have a whole lot of clamps now we're going to glue that in place but I don't want it to slide around so I've got a little uh, 
20, I think it's a 23 gauge pin nailer. So it'll hold it in place when the clamps are on. That leaks. Now, I'm gonna spread this glue. I just wanna get rid of that real quick. What have I got? Excuse me a second, I grabbed that. This stuff looks a little old. Now, I, I took a scraper a long time ago and I just cut a whole bunch of notches in it with a file. And it just works as a, a good glue spreader. And that's the side, oh shoot, that's the side I, uh, I didn't actually want to come right to the edge over here. Simply because I didn't want to glue in the corner. This stuff is messy. Now I'll set that aside and take care of it as soon as I've got this done. This is my side that is going to have the, uh, or it's got the rabbit cut on it. So I'm just gonna see if I can't back that glue off right there. If you're left-handed, you're just gonna reverse this. Now line that up. These are small enough that they won't interfere. They'll bend as this goes over the form. Now I've got a table off of a big jointer. So you need anything flat, several pieces of MDF glued together would work. Now I'll put this piece of melamine on here. Now, if you're short on clamps, what I'll do is take two strips of plywood and hold them back about an inch from the edge. Now the pressure is gonna go on these and the pressure goes out at about a 45, so they're pretty close to overlapping. And I took some pieces of just two by four and I'll put that right there. I jointed the edge. Put that one about in the middle. Now, I can come in with one clamp. Bring that down tight. And I've got one that's really deep. I'll save it for over here. Shoot. And that masking tape will create my mold. It's good and tight. And I've got squeeze out. I don't have any squeeze out over here, which is good, but I've got squeeze out on both ends. Hopefully I'll get a little bit there in the middle.
Would have liked to have gotten that one over a little bit more. Uh, but I can't. Okay, we'll give that about a half hour to set up. Actually, what's happened is this has moved. The pins, the pins actually uh, didn't hold it. So let me grab a clamp. That's still wet enough that I can move it. This one's okay. But I gotta take the pressure off of this one and the one in the middle. And what I'll do is I'll just reach across from the other side of the MDF to right here and I can pull that over. Put it right on there and that'll keep it flush. Okay, give that 30 minutes and we'll come back. Okay, I took this out of the clamps. And we'll just pull the tape off. Check to make sure that we got a little bit of a curve in this. All right, put this on the table saw. Yeah. So if you look at that, and when you put the, right here, if you look, when the weight of the plane goes on there, it'll push that down, but that'll always keep that square. Now, I think I'll trim it up just a little bit, and I'll use the table saw to do that, just to get rid of the uh, glue squeeze out. So this is 12, I'll go just a little less than 12. We can put this, actually I should take that over to the bench and clean it up and get rid of the saw marks. Let's reconvene over there. Okay, we'll put the cleat on the bottom. Actually, we'll just clean this up real quick. Need a shooting board to make a shooting board. So just check that so your projection is parallel to the sole. And this is mostly just to get rid of saw marks. Oh, actually, I gotta do this one too. Now, straighten this and then put it up here in my plane to check it. See how that's got a pivot point in the middle? I don't want that, so I'm gonna take a section out of the middle. Then I'm gonna start here about an inch away from the end, and I'll go down to about an inch away from that end, and then I'll take a complete pass, run my fingers there, and I can feel a little transition mark, so 
try that again. That's better. So that'll be the surface that I actually work against. So I'm going to glue this one down and I'll clean this one up just to get rid of the saw marks. Then we can plane the top of this. Okay, this is the one, right? Yeah, oh, shoot. Let me get something a little bit longer. Make sure there isn't any debris. Okay, that's better. All right, so this, just put an arrow, that's gonna be my fence face. Now, just plane the saw marks off of this. Oh wow, that's got a huge twist in it. Well, I gotta try to get that out. I don't want that edge to be anything less than square, so because I had to completely redo what would have been my reference base, I'll just check this again. This would be the one I glue. Now we want to get our length right on. So I'll just clean that up. Anytime you're planing across the end grain, you've got to cut a chamfer on the far side first to protect it from breaking out. There's just enough there to clean that up. A little bit more. Okay, that's good. Now, <clears throat> this is where that goes. I'm going to glue this in first and then I'll come back and put some screws in it. But since the glue acts like a weld, I always I always want to glue it. The problem with trying to glue it and screw it at the same time is that the it has a tendency to creep. Not that it won't do that under clamps as well, but I'll show you how we treat the the actual fence a little bit differently. I'm going to purposely keep that away from that front edge just so I don't have to scrape glue off of that corner. Now put that approximately where I want it. Just wiggle it a little bit so that it'll spread the glue around. Now hold the plane in place, put the square on there, use the square to hold the two perfectly square to each other. Check and make sure I didn't, there's nothing there. Gotta move that just a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna sit here and hold this for about five minutes until that glue has enough tack that it'll stay put. And then once it's dried, 20, 25 minutes, I'll come back in and put some screws in there to make sure it doesn't move. This ensures that you get a perfectly square setup.
All right, see you in a minute. Okay, everything's dry, so it's ready to put together now. I'm, uh, I'm going to use three number eight by inch and a quarter on the cleat. I already drilled them. I accidentally drilled too deep on one. That's the one that the tr plane travels on, so I've got to put a one inch screw there. And for these, I'm going to actually drill from the bottom in. Just because that babinga is so hard, the screws will hold better in the babinga than they would in the MDF. There's a lot more force acting on the fence than there is on that cleat. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Now because this babinga is so hard, I went in and drilled a bigger hole in the babinga so that the threads wouldn't fetch up in the babinga and they would bite into the MDF. Okay, now just cut some chamfers on this, make it a little easier on the hands when you pick it up. Same thing here, just on, on this one and this one. Uh, maybe I'll take just a little bit off of this. Okay. Now we got a little bit of glue squeeze out on here. We may as well knock that off. Take a little bit off of there. And that's where I went through with that <clears throat> countersink bit. Now you can put a finish on this if you want to preserve it, but I, I don't like this surface being too slippery. It's nice to have the board, a little bit of resistance here. Now let me grab a piece of walnut. And we'll check that. Square that way, square that way, perfect. So there you go. If you weren't talking and telling somebody how to do it, it takes about 15 minutes to make. They start to get beat up, you can fix them, you can just make another one, but it'll, it'll serve you well. And that tip with molding it over a form so that it stays, at least has a little bit of cup in it, that'll serve you really well. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time in the shop.